the attorney general's office is prohibited from representing anybody with any personal business. They're only authorized to represent public officials, state officials. In their official capacity. When they're his official business on the table. And so then we went out and he granted her motion and we went out and sat down. We talked for two hours in front of a, another a witness uh, about What's how, the importance of, of asking, is she authorized to make this motion? What's well, the importance? If, if she hadn't been, if she would, and she later told me, she said on her first substantive pleading, the first time that she filed this, she, she said, I am making a motion to quash the subpoena for the Brown. Quash means get rid of it. And, um, and at the bottom of the first page, she had a footnote and she said, ORS 180.220 prohibits the attorney general from working for anybody other than a state official with official business on the table. And the subsection two says, Okay, let's slow down. Okay. That's the attorney general's office is prohibited from representing anybody with any personal business. They're only authorized to represent public officials, state officials in their official capacity when they're his official business on the table. And Kate Brown's stalking order against you is not official that's business. that has something to do with interfacing personally right stalking even if there was stalking but she said there wasn't that was her you know assertion in the in on the pages of the stalking order so the attorney general's office should not have touched this case because she's not acting and she's reluctant yeah she the gal that came up summer that's why she reluctant. swallowed hard and lied. And, she lied. Mm -hmm. And and I, the first time we had a hearing together, after the hearing, we were out in the hall, and I said, Summer, who, who put you up to this? And she goes, John. And, but it was quiet. She didn't want to have everybody in the room hear it and in the hall. And there were a couple sheriffs standing close enough to hear her. She said, John. And I go... You mean John Kroger personally? He's the he was the attorney general, and she goes, yes. So Kay Brown, as the is she still Secretary of State at this time? Yeah, she's uh, Secretary. Yeah, of State. had just become yeah just same be year. Yep, just become Secretary of State, and is using the attorney general's office as her private attorneys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Who is trying to bring it into this organized crime ring? Well, you weren't saying it that way, were you? Were you saying it that way? Probably uh, by this time. Yeah, I, I. They knew what you were doing. Yeah, they. Yeah, With the, the state file. Of Oregon. The file in that case is five hundred pages, and I had argued, you know, and I said I told them the first thing that I asked her. And all of those letters that I wrote to her, four letters that I wrote to her immediately prior to her getting the stocking order are in that file as evidence, right? So, yeah, they knew. It was all a matter of record. And uh, But you're, I mean, even though you had people kind of supporting you, you're really doing this all by yourself. I mean, you've pretty had, much, yeah, you've had much. people that you've communicated with and they've come and, and gone and, and stuff, but you're, you're basically on your own and the state really just laid it on you. And, and 
are still still laying it on yeah right yeah. that was back in in that's uh 2009 mm -hmm. and so and we've talked about your second to the last hearing no you you are arrest you said it was a funny story your second to your last arrest i'm not sure how i can find any of these humorous but you said it was a, kind of a funny story so there's still two arrests that you haven't really covered and you're 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 still going i mean you got to be exhausted now i'm 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 done with this i i i want to get out i want to quit i want to while i was arrested um a couple of times on this well related to this current charge i'm currently wanted right so on February 2nd of 2018, I went to the Secretary of State's office to the corporate division, and I and I had I had just walked down from the state archives, and I had a the law that said the Secretary of State's going to hand over the duties of titling, registering vehicles, and licensing drivers to the new at that point 1956 DMV. I said. And I asked, uh, when when that happened, did the subject class, the, the person who was a driver, did the definition of a driver change? And no one there wanted to talk about it. And they and they called the cops. Uh, or who's they? Actually, the supervisor of that of the corporate division of the Secretary of State's office. He went in the back. So I'm, I'm going to go in the back for a minute. Just sit out here. And so I'm sitting out there and. Waiting for an answer. You're thinking right. you might get something that you're looking mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. And while I'm while he's back there, I start writing it out on a piece of paper. And he comes back in, and I hand him this piece of paper with my request. And here come the cops through the front door. And they said, well, they, they knew they couldn't. They arrested me, but they knew they couldn't keep me. So they said, just get out of here. And I. So they put you in cuffs? No, like that kind of arrest, no. or they just they, said, "Hold on, you're not had going." Had me surrounded against all. Oh, there were several of them. Unlawfully the detained. Unlawfully detained, and and the sergeant went back in the office and talked to. They they wouldn't let me stay in front of the camera. The camera in the office. They said we're going to go out in the hall, <laughs> and they put me against the wall. And these officers were keeping me there. And he came back out, and he said, "Okay." Uh, we can't keep you, but, and I said, okay, what's the deal here? And yeah, what's that for? And they said, just get out of here, but we're, but we will get you. And I go, uh, do you remember you're this going guy's to get name? me for what? Who's this guy's name? Do you remember this guy's oh, name? Oh yeah. That guy was, the sergeant was Plummer, Sergeant Plummer. And I'd been what involved county? with, the this Ma is Marion County. Marion County. I'd been involved with Sergeant Plummer several times before, and uh, he said, we will get you, and I go, what are you going to get me for? Don't I have a choice to be gotten or to commit some act that I might know about? Or No, just get out of here. So within, a, within that week, I went into hiding because I took him seriously. I had been They're living. Dangerous. I had been living in next to archives or close enough to it, so I was over there all the time, uh, exploring what's going on with the DMV over the years. And uh, I went to live with this gal that I'd been working for as a paralegal. And uh, she had, she said, "You want to come out here and sleep behind my padlock gate? You can help me take care of my horses." I said, "Yeah, that'd be great." So I went out, hadn't been there before, didn't really know what was going on, but she had a herd of 56 horses, and uh, they were uh, a very welcoming group. I've never, I've never experienced what I experienced there. The horses? Uh -huh, the horses, and one of them, one of them. The, the biggest mare in the herd, 
she told me that she was going to be mine. She said, you know, I'm going to essentially be your mom. I'm going to support you. And I was blown away. I, I went in to meet her one night. I, I was attracted to her because she was so big. And I went in to her stall. And we had this <clears throat> kind of, it wasn't, we weren't talking English, but we were communicating. And, and by the time, and I didn't even touch her. But by the time I left, she had laid her head in my arms across my chest. Mm. And I, and I, I was just blown away. I, what is this? I, I don't even know you yet. I just met you 10 minutes ago. And anyway, she became very special to you. Yeah. And I just want to, I want to live with that herd of horses or as many as I can. And and you found out recently that those horses were actually, there's, there's like a legal issue going on. And she, she was unable to adequately care for them. And she had been, she was obsessed and she couldn't benefit from their being up close to her she couldn't appreciate them for what they were and the lady that owned them the and so the them. horses were taken by the state and now the, this herd of horses that you're talking about the state has and she her trial is coming up next week and and you in your position right now you're a wanted man for all this stupid stuff that's completely illegal completely unlawful completely criminal the state yeah and all I want, and to do all is you go, want is her, and you can't. I want to go. Yeah, I want to live with this. What, what's I'll, her name? I'll what's even her name? Yeah, I'll say her name. Her name is Tailored Forever. Tailored Forever. And uh, she's this huge red horse. Um, anyway, and that's that's what I want to do. But I, you I can't. Need, I need help. I need money to support a herd of horses. I need you land. You need the state to get off of you. I need the state to compensate me for the shit that I put up with. Anyway, that's that's my current ambition. Then the last time I was arrested was a consequence of that, a plumber telling me they would get me. And then a few months later, I called a senator, and she'd helped me before. I, I was going to ask her, can you check and see if I'm still banned from the Capitol or, or whether I'm whether there was a ban? The first time I talked to her about it, she went and found the list of people banned from the Capitol and found that I wasn't one of the two people. On the list. On the list. There's a process, too. You can't just be banned. Right. There's the statutes that constitute exclusion from public property are at 131.705 to 735 and none of that happened none of that happened so i was you're not on the list i'm not i, I no i didn't get to talk to her uh and but i wanted to ask her can you check again and see if i'm on it now or whether anything changed but i talked to her staff and the staff talked to the cops, and the cops and, wrote and who, this. who is her? The, I don't think. The staff. Oh, uh, her name was. Um, the senator. Is it a senator? No, her. She, no. The senator was Kim Thatcher, okay. and the and the this other gal was named uh, Linda something Linda. One of one of Thatcher's staff members. Yeah, phone answerer. Okay. And she said, "You're not supposed to be calling here." I said. Um, and I called her a, I called her an appropriately ugly name and, and she told the cops and the cops wrote this affidavit in support of her warrant and they didn't even do any, they, they should have asked her to write this. Because you called her a name. Uh, and, and yeah, that was, that, that's some... what they, that's what they thought telephonic harassment was, is if you 
talk ugly on the phone. And that's freedom of speech. But that's... But you weren't always talking ugly in the beginning. It's just now you're first... No, when she told me, yeah. you can't be calling here, that's when I... I go... Yeah, I'm just like, ah! I call her stupid. And... Mm -hmm. and um, but she was supposed to write that. She's, it should have said, he called me. I heard him tell me this. And, but even then, it wouldn't have been telephonic harassment because that I wasn't banned from the Capitol in any legitimate sense of the word. I wasn't prohibited from calling her boss. And I never should have been, ever, and ne and never, for any of right. this. Yeah, and her boss knew that. And, and had told me I wasn't on the banned list. That's right. So the the warrant for my current arrest, warrant that exists against me today, is bogus for that reason. It's not based on any facts that are encoded in law. 